Have you ever encountered a hurdle with launching or growing your business? Listen, there are two things that run a business, the back end and your soft skills. I'm telling you right now, if these are in place, you'll lose clients and you'll lose money. Don't want that? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Dana. Hey, I'm Sarah. We're your hosts who are going to tell you how it is, give you tips and tricks, and even occasionally bring on a guest that care about supporting you grow your business organically and nurture authentic relationships. Are you ready? Welcome to the third and final part of our series of building better relationships with your clients. Again, just to kind of recap, I think all of us kind of get into a rut of just doing the work and getting it done as quickly as possible. And we frequently forget to recognize some of our clients as individuals that are virtually standing right in front of us. These individuals are our clients. They're our referral sources. They're potential lifelong friends that we just, we need to remember who they are, that they're not just a number at the end of the day and making our monthly revenue goals. They're human beings operating a business just like we are. And you both can recognize, or we all can recognize that that's a time consuming process. Running a business is hard. <laughs> it is a roller coaster of emotions. And it's essential to keep in mind that at the base level of building a business is you need to be building relationships as a continuous effort. It is not a one and done process. So we talked about over the space of a few weeks, focusing on communication, having positive energy when interacting with our clients, treating them as individuals, sharing our knowledge with them, exceeding their expectations, understanding their goals and values, speaking their language, which is huge. And we're going to talk about that one in a few minutes. Using project delivery tools and developing appreciation for our clients. Speak your client's language. And so it's been pointed out to me by my friends who are not clients, but they're also not in the virtual space or my dad, for instance, who doesn't know what I do, even though I've tried explaining it multiple times. Speaking your client's language is breaking down the things you're doing in a way they understand it, almost in like an elementary level explanation, not to the point of making them feel stupid for not knowing something, but breaking it down to a way that they understand. So like, for instance, my dad doesn't know what a virtual assistant is, and I really got tired of explaining it to him because he doesn't understand how I make money. He just knows that I make enough to pay my bills most of the time <laughs> when I first launched my business. Um, I'm doing better now for everyone that's listening. I can pay my bills now. But he didn't understand what a virtual assistant was. Like the whole online space because of, you know, the time period that he grew up in. He understands the internet and, you know, he can share on Facebook. Usually it's embarrassing stuff, but he shares it regardless. But the idea that I can be an administrative assistant or an executive assistant to some CEO who does not live in the state of North Carolina or I don't go into an office just baffles him. So I work with wedding creatives specifically, and they don't know about online business management. Honestly, they understand logistics of timelines. But they don't fully comprehend workflows and systems in this regards of owning a business. They just create the timeline and they show up. Most people that are like entrepreneurs that get into business, like you want to turn your passion into a money-making avenue. But none of us know how to run a business. Like we don't know about when we first got started, we didn't know about project management tools. We didn't know how to automate things. We didn't really know how to balance i guarantee none of us knew how to balance a checkbook like all of those things that create a strong foundation none of us really know how to do so i don't want to just start spitting off like va obm crm any other acronyms that i can't think of off the top of my head like they're not going to know what that means so i'm going to like break it down and say here's your project management tool that we are going to use to keep your clients moving forward it's called ClickUp, or it's called asana or whatever it is, and then give them the walkthrough. I'm going to explain it to them in a way that they understand. So any of my examples for my clients is going to be wedding related. Any of your clients, 
is going to be whatever industry that they're in so that they have a real world example of what it is that we're doing and makes them more comfortable with the changes that we're making. Because you don't want to just go in and start making all these changes and then they're going to panic and they're not going to want to do that workflow because they don't understand why it's important and how it fits into their business and life. I had a conversation with with somebody the other day and she's explained to me like what she's doing and what she needs help with and I had asked her I said do you have a project management she's like what's that I was like somewhere where you organize all your tasks and your goals and everything that you need to get done within your work and again if a line is blown like you know you can say project management tool but when I have to talk to somebody that obviously doesn't know what that is I mean they know what it is but they're not entirely sure like the breakdown of it and I just kind of explained it to them it's how you organize all your tasks and all the things that you have to get done within the week within the month and then the light bulb goes off and they're like I need that I like to explain that like a plan I'm a list maker. I basically do double the work, but it's just how my brain operates. I need to write it down. Not that anyone can see this, but I'm holding up my planner that lives on my desk. And I take the virtual, because if you look at my ClickUp, at any given point in the day, I probably, I do have like 30 some odd tasks to do every day because I have six clients that I work with. So I take three or four of them at a time that are the most urgent and I write them down in my planner. and. Go and then I cross them off and I, at the end of the day, I go back and update ClickUp. And that's the system that works for me, but that doesn't work for everybody else. So a project management tool is just a fancy way of saying it's your digital planner. You know, I get that gratification of highlighting something off my list. Yes, I use, I use Monday and I put all my tasks in there, but it's easier for me to have it written down. So I don't have ever, all of these things, like all the open tabs on my computer. So whatever I need to get done for. Like, whatever I need to get done for today, that's how I would do it. I mean, again, like, yes, everybody's different on what they do and how they organize things. But of course, like when you're working with your clients, you still want to make sure that the, the projects are getting done. And whatever project management tool you have, you can look at day, write down on a piece of, it can just be a piece of paper and write down what you have to do for that day. So you're not having to look at the whole month. Then what you can do is break down each task into like many tasks to be able to get that done. So that's another way that you can deliver your projects to your clients to make sure that you get things done on time. I have so many questions. Monday.com has been one of those project management tools I wanted to dive into. I've never actually used it. But it's the most different because ClickUp, Trello, and Asana to me are all almost carbon copies of each other. <laughs> I like ClickUp a little bit better, but Monday has been on my list of things to whenever I do have time to look into. So add that to future post ideas of let's talk about project management tools, specifically Monday. If there's any project management tools that you would like to learn about, just let us know and we can do the research and tell you guys about all of the project management management tools out there. I feel like that's the perfect segue and to use project delivery tools that give a positive impression on clients. So for mine, it's usually clicked up. I give them a, a nice walkthrough during our onboarding of like, this is what your board will look like. Especially if they don't have a project management tool, we just start with them because I know it and then I can toggle between and I don't have to have an extra login. It is easier for me. But I use this tool to deliver any work beginning to end of anytime they randomly need me to help with a design deck for a full planning client or follow up on a vendor quote that hasn't been received. I, they can see in the bird's eye view that, yes, I'm act like every day I'm working on something because I can leave notes in that task and let them know where I'm standing. They don't have to chase me down. But the day gets moved, they can see why. Uh, they can see what documents I need or don't need. If they just did a wedding show, I need to get them added to their newsletter or email list. All of those things are value to them. And now they get to everything is getting delivered to them almost in the moment that I'm working on it. And they get an end of week wrap up, which is something I email them every Friday, letting them know what I've done, what I plan to do next week. Any questions I have that aren't like emergent, because if it's emergency, then I use Slack. That's the tool, the communication tool that I use to chat with them. I was, I thought about Boxer, but that chirping got on my nerves. I get too many, like I'd have to leave my notices on and I just can't do that. 
But then I have clients that don't like that and they just text me. So, but that the project management tool is how I take texts, emails, virtual calls, however something is thrown at me, I take all of that chaos and put it into one central location so that A, they don't forget and B, I don't forget. So like three months down the road, they're like, hey, remember back in way back when I asked you to do this? One, I'll slightly remind them that they should have looked at the project management tool. But I will also say yes, because I've already taken the notes and put it in the comments. So I can refresh myself and it makes a nice professional bow is put on all of that communication and it gives them again more calm or like confidence rather. Uh, okay, going forward, one, they'll be better, but two, they just know that I have them. It's also like a accountability partner, so to speak, right? So for example, like you were saying, like, you know, they text you all these things that they get done. So you have to organize all the chaos. I mean, you know, I have a client that does that as well. She literally brain dumps and she's like, okay, this is all the things that I want to get done. These are all the things I need to get done. And when we first started working together, I had asked her, do you have a project management? She said, no. I was like, we need to get, get set up, get this set up. Everything is organized and in place because if you don't have any of that stuff organized, things are going to get missed. I think that helps look, you look for those moments of appreciation as well. I, I am big on that because words of affirmation is one of my love languages, I constantly self-sabotage and think, oh my gosh, I I need to hear them doing a good job because ultimately I think like, oh man, they're going to be so mad. It's like going to get called to the principal's office when you're a kid and you just think, oh, what if I like start reeling in my head? Like, what did I do wrong? Shoot, what did I forget something? Did I yell at the wrong person? Did I talk to the client in a way that didn't like mirror their voice or something? I don't know. I just get freaked out. So one, it opens the ability for me to go the extra mile by adding all of the extra communication. But I also give them appreciation that they are doing a good job as my, technically my partner and in their business of, hey, thanks for getting me this new email spreadsheet with all of the bridal show attendees. Or thank you for getting me your logins in a timely manner so that I don't have to chase you down. Like, Very small things, but can have a big impact on my ability to do my job. If I can't do my job, then they're going to be upset. But without that project management tool or that way of communicating or having a storage place, it just makes it easier. So I constantly look for those moments where I say, thank you for getting back to me or thank you for the feedback on these templates that I created for you or whatever the case may be. Some clients value that hands-on access and like those knowing where you are at every stage of the process. And so throughout that process, I've learned over the years to include moments where I say thank you, or I appreciate you doing this for my business, or I appreciate this referral that you gave. I intentionally put those moments in my processes. Also, if you're hands-on with your clients and letting them know everything that's going on, even if they don't say anything to you about it, they will love you forever for being able to communicate and stay on top with everything. You're working with other business owners and they're busy and that's why they hired you so that you are able to get all the back end of their business done or whatever that you're doing for them. So just being able to communicate with them, telling them what's going on. I feel like if they don't respond back in a timely manner, to say thank you to know they are thankful for you because they hired you for a reason. You showing appreciation, that goes a long way. I think like the thoughtful listening to of they are busy, but what's keeping them busy is an important thing to remember. One of my clients is a photographer. And I thought that when we first had our onboarding call and like our coffee chats before I sent the proposal, I genuinely thought that was his only source of income, that he was just a, a photographer. And But he was late on responding. I didn't get upset and I wasn't like shaming him like, hey, can I go to get this? And then the next day I would have to do a follow up. And sometimes another day I'd have to do a follow up. And we finally had a call just like because I do weekly calls with my clients or I try to. But wedding season is... <laughs> real you guys and stressful and if you if your wedding professional is not getting back to you in 24 hours it's because they probably had back-to-back events and they're exhausted so i understand that so i checked in with him during the call and i was like hey what's going on what can i do to help support you get things off your plate so you can breathe and i come to find out he was 
He worked a full-time job as a firefighter, pivoting to being a full-time police officer. So he was getting ready to go through school, and that in itself is a crazy mindset. He was also expecting his first child at the end of the year, which is the whole nother. Any parents out there will know, like, your first child throws you for a mental loop. So that intentional question and thought process, I was like, okay. If we need to adjust our time frame, because, you know, I have boundaries, I have set hours, but I wanted to express that value. We figured out a better package that worked for him together. We figured out a better time frame that worked. Our meetings typically would end up being like a dedicated like 20 minutes of direct Slack contact or instantly messaging back and forth. Like, here's all my questions and he would answer them. And then if anything else that I had coming up, like, well, what if we try this? But it wasn't a virtual call because I really didn't have time to do that. So we would just dedicate like 10, 15 minutes once a week to really fire messaging each other, like really blowing each other up. It was fun. But they got him through that time. And now he's more confident in my ability to support his business. And he's able to relax or only really put his hands on his business on the weekends because that's the time that he now has for the next five to six months because he has everything else that's going on so communication you guys i know we've like killed it but if like all of these soft skills will all feel like rely on communication effective communication can have the biggest impact on your business on your relationships with your clients increase your income because i'm not going to pay someone that doesn't listen to me and i'm not going to pay someone who doesn't care and you can't if you if you genuinely care about someone you're going to communicate with them so how are you guys going to improve your relationships let us know in the facebook group 